Hey, Pirate Dave here. In my last review, I said I would review Duke Nukem 3D, and I thought about the next words coming out of my mouth being sorry, it's been delayed, it'll be done when it's done, but I figured that would be a cheap shot, and besides, you've had to deal with that enough for the past decade or so, so here it is. I'll be reviewing a couple different aspects about this game, both including the time surrounding its release, the plot, general gameplay aspects, and the popular aspects of it that have kept people talking about it for 13 years. As I've said, I have my own personal opinions about this game that may differ from that of the average Duke Nukem fan, but let's not get into that yet. So here it is. Enjoy. Released in 1996 and developed by what was Apogee Software, now 3D Realms, Duke Nukem 3D was the last of the sprite-based shooters and the definition of a cult classic. It had a good inventory both in weapons and support items, clean graphics for the time, and plenty of controversial scenarios that allowed parents to believe their children were truly being corrupted. Using a new graphics engine called the Build Engine, Duke Nukem 3D allowed the player to use full mouse look, blow up walls, and even collapse entire buildings. Duke Nukem 3D was the most comprehensive sprite-based shooter the gaming had seen, utilizing every advancement made by previous titles from the genre into one game. But let's put this in perspective. Duke Nukem 3D is released in 1996, four years after Wolfenstein 3D and three years after Doom, both those titles developed by ID Software. Apogee Software, later to become 3D Realms, had actually published Wolfenstein 3D. So when ID came to Apogee with their next game, Doom, the conversation ended with ID making the claim that Apogee would never publish another one of their games again. Later that same year, Ken Silverman is contacted to start work on the build engine and three years later were given Duke Nukem 3D. However, six months after Duke Nukem 3D's release, we're given Quake, and the first real 3D engine, the Quake engine. So you have to ask yourself from a technical standpoint, did Duke Nukem 3D and the build engine lend anything to the first person shooter genre? All this isn't really what we hear about when we first talk about Duke Nukem 3D with people that were there when it first came out. We hear about the plot, and the character of Duke Nukem. So let's check this out next. If we just start a new game of Duke Nukem 3D, it doesn't give us much insight into what we're doing here exactly. So instead, we have to choose help from the main menu. And we're met with what looks like half of the opening page of a book Duke Nukem 3D might have been based off of. Luckily, thanks to the internet, I've managed to find out more about the story. You play Duke Nukem, a smarmy wisecracking soldier returning from outer space to planet Earth after a campaign of fighting off aliens. Except now, the LAP or LARD are horrible mutants. Pornography is the only form of entertainment. And aliens have also invaded Earth, abducting women in order to carry out insidious breeding, which is just one of many things you've got to put a stop to. But before you can even begin to uncover this plot, you're going to have to solve puzzles, uncover secrets, resist your urges, jump over platforms, keep your finger on the trigger, and hold your breath until Duke can finally set off the nuke. So the story doesn't sound too bad, but keep in mind I had to use the internet to find out the details of it. And this wasn't a staple of the first person shooter genre either, just pushing you into the game. It was just a year before Dark Forces had used cutscenes to convey its story. Many people will say that Duke Nukem isn't about the story though, that the plot is just an excuse to make a game like Duke Nukem. But I think that the mature themes that Duke Nukem uses people deserved a little bit of an explanation about what was going on. Although when it's all said and done that doesn't make this a bad game. But is it good enough now, 13 years later, for fans of it to exclaim to those who haven't played it that they should check it out? Does it have that kind of lasting appeal? There's no denying that any FPS fan in 1996 would have enjoyed Duke Nukem 3D, but almost everything about this game is just rehashed from the many FPS games before it. The interactive environments were unique to Duke, but ultimately this may have been its downfall, as the desire to achieve an even better result in Duke Nukem Forever is one of the many things that has set its development back for so long. In the years since Duke Nukem 3D, many titles have been developed by other studios and published or produced by 3D Realms, including remakes of both Duke Nukem 3D and Duke Nukem 1 and 2 before it. But Duke Nukem 3D stands alone as the last Duke Nukem to be made by its originators, who have been supposedly working on a sequel for years. What truly makes Duke Nukem unique is not that he's a good character, or even one you can root for, but instead he's a joke. Not a great one either, but when you get the joke, you can move on, and when you don't, 
Well, you probably still hold on to that GameStop reserve just in case. Thanks for watching my review on Duke Nukem 3D. This is Pirate Dave saying so long.